Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Agent Mastermind call for today. It's the 15th of January. I'm just going to take a minute here and let everybody get logged in. Um, I am Paul Baxter. As you can tell, it's a little bit different voice than you're used to hearing with Mr. Scott Hudspeth. Our, our good friend Scotty is actually traveling today, um, and so he is asked me to kind of fill in his spot and being that the man that Scott is he was able to get our good friend and expert Jessica Peterson on the call with us. How are you today Jessica? Doing fabulous. How are you? Oh, That's another day in paradise I, and we were just talking about weather so I won't brag too much I'm just saying I'm sitting in flip-flops and shorts right by the pool today. That's all I'm going to oh, say. Oh wow. wow. Did, did I brag too much there? Was that a little too much? No, no, I'm looking at our temperature gauge. It's 9 out right now, 9 degrees. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, if you add 70 to that number, that's what it is here right now today. Oh, okay. So I, I know you're a little jealous. I, I, I can feel it, and, and, I, <laughs> and I hear it in the voices of everybody watching this. Go Look, everybody just logged off thinking, I'm not going to sit here and listen to him talk about that weather all day. Well, I <laughs> promise you guys, you will not be stuck listening to me talk about this weather all day. Um, we have got a fantastic call for you. Um, Scotty, Scotty kind of had knew, found out last week he was going to be traveling and set this up with Jessica to bring you guys a really, really awesome presentation about a topic that I think, and, and Jessica, tell me if I'm wrong here, but this is probably the single most important topic when people think about using Facebook for their business. What you're going to cover today is the aspect that most people miss but is probably the single most important part of the whole thing. Absolutely, yes. Facebook has been phenomenal for my business and many of my clients' business as well. Well, and I can tell you for our business here, the, the, the business that I work for, the marketing animals, you know, Carl's business, he will, he will hands down tell you that it has been an absolute godsend to our business here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get the recorder started, and, and we can jump right into the presentation if that's okay with you. Perfect. Awesome, awesome. So I'll go ahead and get the recorder started here. All right, everybody, welcome to the Agent Mastermind call for today, the 15th of January, 2013. I am Paul Baxter. I am here to help with what questions you've got, but we are all here today to listen to our good friend, Miss Jessica Peterson. Jessica, what a wonderful day and a wonderful opportunity to have you on yet again. And so I just want to start out with a, a thank you in advance for you being here and uh, the great materials that you bring to the show each and every time. So uh, thank you in advance. Um, I know Jessica's got a presentation today that's all about steps you can take to create massive engagement on Facebook and really utilize Facebook for your business. It's, it's all about relationship building. And so Jessica's going to present for us today a great way to use Facebook to build those relationships and generate revenue. So, uh, Jessica, I know you've got a great presentation, and, and I'll probably prompt it. I'll have some questions throughout, so if you don't mind, I'll ask those to you. But if you want to get started, jump right in. Perfect. Well, thank you. What a huge honor for you to have me back. I'm really excited to talk about how to build relationships and build business on Facebook. Um, that seems to be a very popular question nowadays. So I'm super excited, and my goal is for each person on this call to at least find one golden nugget, to find one new tip that they can go ahead and implement in their business and start getting more business on Facebook. Um, so absolutely. And thank you again for having me back, okay? Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Okay. So let me go ahead here. For some reason, it's not letting me go to the next page. So I apologize for that. Um, let me go ahead and go to here. My computer crashed over the weekend, so that's been always fun and exciting for me. <laughs> that's always a good time. Yeah, always a good time. So I'm just going to go ahead, like I said, if you guys could just bear with me just one moment, I will go ahead and pull it up here for everyone so that they can go ahead and we can try and get this pulled up. Does that sound good? Absolutely, absolutely. 
Or um, we, could do so, this, we could do the standard announcement, we are having technical difficulties. Please stand by <laughs> while we resolve these issues. Oh, goodness. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do it this, this kind of motion, if that's okay, okay? That'll be fine. And, and guys and girls, and Jessica's going to let us have access to this PowerPoint. So if you can't see, you know, it's not a full screen. If you can't read all the words that are on it currently, just contact the loan professional who invited you to today's class, and they'll get you the actual copy of this so that you can, you can see it in its, its entirety. Absolutely. So um, again, just a little bit about my background, nearly 20 years in the banking finance field. Uh, I learned a lot what does work and what does not work. And so the purpose of this presentation, um, we're going to cover that. We're also going to cover the question, why do I need to know how to build relationships and build business on Facebook? Mind-blowing facts about business relationships helpful tips on utilizing Facebook to the advantage of your business, and then we'll briefly go over our gifting service as well at the end if we have time. So the purpose of this slideshow is to show you how to effectively use Facebook to build enduring customer relationships and increase business. So as of October 2012, Facebook has 1 billion active monthly users. Okay. Another fact is over 2.7 billion likes every day on Facebook. Um, I find that activity. just that's yeah, a lot of activity. That's a lot of activity, and right now it's the number one social media source. Pinterest actually is number two right now, and moving quickly. Yes, moving very quickly. So why do I need to know all of this? Well, we ultimately want people to save time. I don't know about you, but I've heard from some people that they get sucked into it, and next thing you know, they've been on Facebook for two hours. <laughs> um, so, you know, none of us have time to do that. If you do have time to do that, that's amazing. Um, another goal is to communicate with your top clients quickly and easily. Times have really changed, you know, in the good old days you maybe pop by someone's home or go to their business, but we're all so busy. Not many of us have time for that. Um, Facebook is a free service as of now, and I'm all about saving, you know, fuel cost. Hmm. I'm very e eco-friendly. Um, saving the environment. Writing posts or sending Facebook messages saves paper. So I definitely grew up in an eco-friendly out in Oregon, and that's very important to me. So, and keeping in touch. I mean, so many people seem to be lacking in that staying in touch in today's society. So I wanted to go ahead and start out with a testimonial from a real estate agent because um, she's been fantastic on Facebook, and she says she started about five years ago in November. She, she was trying to figure out exactly when. She started it for her real estate business, but she said, when talking to clients, I discovered they wanted to know more about me personally. Hmm. Since the home buying process was really quite intimate. Um, within three months, I had reconnected with a friend from high school, sold him a house, and was referred to other clients that both bought with me. I think it is important to toe the very fine line of letting people into your world and reminding them what you do for a living as well. I firmly believe it has eliminated the cold call. You get to know people and the feeling is that a relationship has somewhat already been established. I can't tell you how many people I've started conversations with in person after hearing, hey, we're friends on Facebook. It's a natural conversation starter. In addition, you get to see the way people do business. You can find and choose to work with like-minded individuals. I think it's huge for business. It's a no-brainer, free way to research, promote, meet, and interact. I'm a huge fan. So from her story, what I really like about this is, you know, she is correct that when people let you in their world, um, they want to know about you too. You know, the home buying process is very intimate. Well, and you want to get to know somebody when you're doing business, especially a business transaction the size of a, of a home purchase, which, let's face it, that's the biggest purchase most of us in our lives are going to make. I want to know that person that, I, that I'm buying that house. I want to know who I'm doing business with because that's a huge, that's a huge thing for me or, or anyone for that matter. 
and getting to know that person on I want to know what their interests are. I, I don't want to just know that, okay, she knows that, that this plumbing was reinstalled six months ago or that the roof is five years old. I want to, you know, what, what do you got going, what else is going on? What else do you do? Are you community active? Are you, where church do you go to? Things like that. Absolutely. I have a client who kept resisting getting on Facebook, and he finally did, and he was blown away how it helped his business. He... Um, received a call from a woman who said, I went on Facebook and saw that we have a mutual friend. And right away she felt she can trust him. <laughs> Just by <laughs> knowing that they have a mutual friend to get together. Exactly. And he, can, he, he said, at first he thought that was a little creepy. But then he realized <laughs> that that is so, so important to people, you know. Um, so that was quite fascinating. So did you know facts? There are more than three and a half billion pieces of content, such as web links, news stories, blog posts, et cetera, shared each week on Facebook, okay? And I just want to educate you on this and how important it is to be on Facebook. 43% um, of all online consumers are social media fans or followers, okay? They now have found that if someone likes you on Facebook, on your business page, they're more than likely going to do business with you someday. Okay, Companies on average lose about 50% of their customers each year. And a lot of times that's because they feel that lack of relationship. Um, the latest statistic that came out from Loyalty360 last year is now it costs 20 times more money to do business with a new customer than an existing customer. So you know what, if you want to keep going out there and chasing the latest, greatest customer and spending more money, go for it. But we're about how to teach you to build and maintain those relationships because word of mouth marketing is so powerful. And in real estate specifically, that, that holds very true. There's a statistic that, that's pretty well known, and most of us on this call know this. The statistic is that 87% of people serve, 87 of people said that they would do business with their real estate agent a second time after their transaction. But after mm -hmm. five or seven to nine years, a person only does business with a real estate agent twice about seven to nine percent of the time and the reason why is they don't remember who that person was and so using tapping into your previous customer like it says here it costs 20 times more to do business with a new than an existing customer well your existing customer for you doing business with them again can also mean the referrals that come from them and so being friends and engaging with them and and using Facebook to to continue that relationship after the transaction can ensure that that 87% that said, yeah, they liked you, they'll do it again with you, that you get a much higher percent of them to come back to you after that period of time has expired. Absolutely. I um, have a friend, actually, who listed her home with a different agent than the one she used before, and she said it was because over that, was it three or four year period, it was that lack of touch that lack of feeling cared for, a newsletter may be okay, but there really was no communication. Mm -hmm. um, to her, it was not about saving money, because the old agent came back and said, well, I'll list your home for 1% instead of 3%. She goes, that's not the issue. The issue to me is I want to work with someone who cares for me, mm -hmm. um, takes an interest in me. So I do foresee that being the future trend, and as I mentioned earlier, we're all so busy, and you know, you may be able to pop by and see some of your past clients, but not all of them. So this is a very effective way to stay in touch, see what's happening um, on both ends, on both parties. So, okay, so social wow tip number one. So definitely take control of you know who you regularly see in your news feed. Facebook came in, and I don't know if some of you noticed, but when you log into Facebook, you kind of see the same people over and over, and a lot of people seem to go missing mm -hmm. on who you see in your news feeds. And that's because Facebook came up with their own algorithm, and every month they'll kind of figure out who you may want to see. So my philosophy is if you are my Facebook friend, I want to know what you're up to. I don't want Facebook to tell me who I can and can't see on a regular basis. Um, 
And you know what? I did go through and do a cleansing and deleted several hundred people off Facebook, and that was just because all our time's valuable. And I, you know, if you're going to be my friend, it's because I truly have an interest in you. So it's important to make sure that they are in your newsfeed. Um, so that way you don't just see the same people that Facebook feels you should see. Have you noticed that, Paul, in your case when you log in? Absolutely. And what that's determined by, I was actually on a webinar with, with the uh, director of Facebook fan pages recently. And, and one of the things I learned was that, that what they show you in your newsfeed, if you don't manually go in and tell Facebook what you want to see in your newsfeed by, by doing what Jessica says. You go to the friends and you click on that friend button and you tell Facebook, here, I want to see this friend. If you don't do that, what Facebook will do is it will, it will show you the feeds based on your engagement with other people. So if you have one specific friend that you have a lot of conversations on Facebook, you're going to see them in your newsfeed. You'll see your newsfeed will show you a week old post as opposed to showing you a brand new post of somebody that you have it set up to show in your newsfeed. Mm -hmm. Because Facebook doesn't know any better. They, they just think that's who you engage with, that's who you want to see, so that's what we're going to show you. And so they'll, it, it, it kind of eliminates. Their algorithm is good in a way that, that you don't have to see all the stuff that's always happening on Facebook, but at the same time it can also limit what you do see if you haven't set up your, your preferences yourself. Yes, absolutely. So I, I feel this is very valuable to see what everyone's up to. So, you know, that relationship can be strong. Um, so Especially, and if you've got 500 friends and, you know, you don't want to go through and purge all of them, some of your high school friends, maybe you don't care to see all them in there, but you can also be selective by going through and, okay, this is a past client, I definitely need to see what they're doing, so that you can always engage with those people. And yes, do it on a personal level. Yes, absolutely, and we have some tips and tricks for that we're going to get into. And what is interesting is, you know, when you do go in there and say that you want someone to show up in your news feed, meaning when you log into Facebook to see what they're up to, on your home page, you can even select if you want only what types of updates. But I, I like to just say all updates, but you know, some people may only want to know the important updates for some people. Sure. The key is, is, to, is to tell Facebook what you want to see and that you want to see that from all of the friends or the friends that are important or the ones that you know were, think about your business and who you engage with and who you'd like to engage with and set this up and see their updates because you can't engage back with them if you don't know what they're engaging in. Absolutely. Um, okay, so the social wow tip number two is creating client list. This is one of my most favorite tips of all. You know, a lot of people may say, oh, you know, I have 500 friends or I have 4,000 friends. I can't stay on top of everybody. Well, just like the real world, typically you have an A list, a B list, a C list. So many of us are common, you know, are familiar with those terms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an A list typically means your top 25 clients and the B list is, you know, your top 50 and C is top 100. Well, you can create lists within Facebook. Um, and we're going to go ahead and talk about that. So when I log into Facebook, and I'm limited on time for that day, I can click on my list and only see what my top 25 clients on my A-list are doing. Really give them special attention. It weeds out everybody else. That's very cool. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, your time is valuable and you want to make sure your time is given towards your top past clients. That makes, a, that makes a whole lot of sense to do. On that previous page I was just talking about, you know, and maybe you want to go through and just, just show the, the ones from the, but this eliminates that because now you've got a list of these are my favorite, you know, my top 25 clients. These are my top 50 clients too. Here's my top 100 clients. So you can engage with those that are most important to engage with. That's a, yes. that's a genius move right there. And this is my favorite tip. And what else is fantastic is you can even create a list of your top close friends or family members. Because I have some clients who say, you know, sometimes I share some crazy stuff on Facebook and I don't want, you know, all, everybody on Facebook to see it, just my intimate close friends. Well, if you create a list of that intimate close friends and when you do a post, Underneath there, you can click only for your intimate close friends to see that and not everybody. 
So, and that's important because, you know, if you're going to put something crazy out there on Facebook, you may not want your past clients to see that. And so have you ever tried that, Paul? Have you ever tried to go ahead and put a comment and only people in a certain list see it? I, I have not done, I've, I've, I've actually set up lists before. And, and I did it for a different reason. It was when, when I was very first getting into the market marketing business and just learning about Facebook about two and a half years ago, I started adding people that were business relationships to a, a list that was different than my friends list, thinking mm -hmm. that I wanted to, you know, I didn't want my business relationships to see this post versus my, my friends, and I didn't want the business relationships to paste funny stuff on my wall that my friends could see. And and so, but I've eliminated that. I've actually gone in and taken that out because I realized that I, I want my personal and my business stuff to tie in together because, quite frankly, my business life and my personal life already mm -hmm. ties in together whether I want it to or not. And mm -hmm. so I just, I, I, I eliminated that. But now you're giving me good reason and I'm understanding why now that those lists are so important because I can make a post that is, business related, show it to only those people that are my past clients, and then my, my high school friend Susie doesn't need to see it, or vice versa. I can post something about the high school reunion I was at last week, and, and maybe it's a funny picture that I don't want my clients to be able to see. Exactly, because I will tell you from experience, the other day a real estate agent um, in Utah posted how they like to sit on the toilet in Facebook. I mean, really, um, you know, that is something that I think should only be shared with, you know, very your close personal friends. Exactly. Not everybody needs to see something like that. Um, but I do want to share something else that's very valuable. I had a client who came to me and said, you know, nobody's interacting with me. Nobody's talking to me on Facebook. So if you do put a comment. And then if you do select only a certain list can see that comment, the next time you comment, it's important you change it because it automatically sets it to that. So my client um, put a comment up there so only 10 of her family members could see it. But every post after that for the next month was set only family members could see it and not, nobody else. So you have to manually fix that the next time you go to post a comment. And guys, what that lets you know is that you know Facebook, the, the big thing, and I, and I hear this a lot from people who are reluctant to, to, to get onto Facebook. I don't like Facebook. Well, why? Well, because it's not private. I can't, it, it not, it's not private. Well, no, it's a social media site. It's not intended to be private. It never was intended to be private. But Facebook also understands that there are some things you'd like to share with certain people that don't necessarily need to be public. Well, this is exactly how you do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here it's talking about how to create the list. So if someone's not familiar with it, we have snapshots of how to do this step by step. Um, so people could go, can go ahead and create those lists later on. So again, you want to take care of your top 25 clients and so forth. So here's something that I am so passionate about. Um, you know, they always say to talk to your A clients and ask them for business. Um, well, I tell people, you know, reach out on phone or Facebook to your A clients and say, I am trying to expand um, my, my friends list and who are top five people that you value their friendship and think that I would really connect with them in our community. So one of my clients um, tried this, and you can see on the bottom her personal story. Um, her top A client said, why stop at only five? And her friend recommended 30 people to her. So her database started growing. So her top A client personally went out to their top 30 friends and said, hey, you got to know this woman. You got to know this lady. So then what she did, though, is she took those people and put them in a list. Um, you know, and you can name the list nurturing business, potential future business, and start developing some new relationship. It's a great way to grow your network. So what do you think of that tip, Paul? I, that's one of my favorites. 
Okay. <laughs> I, it's what it what what she's explaining here, guys, is that is it, you we all have our business pages, and we all have a personal page. You can't have a business page without a personal page. And what she's explaining here is a way to utilize your personal page to accentuate and expand and grow your business page. To get more engagement on your business page, you do it on your personal level. You engage with them on the personal level. And there will be time and, a, and an opportunity for you to invite them and get them over to the business side of things. So Facebook is not about separating business and personal. Because in your real life, your business and personal is not separate. Mm -hmm. Facebook is very much just like that. You have to combine the two. You have to, to make sure that the two are coinciding with one another to generate the kind of engagement and those, those, the fans and, and get that massive communication going back and forth between all three. People want to get to know you on a personal level, so use your personal Facebook page for that aspect of it. But you also have the ability with lists and, and the different things here to get people over to and show them the business side of what you do. So you can combine the two, and they do work cohesively with one another. And you don't have to share, you know, Bobby broke his arm yesterday, I pushed him out of the swing with your business people. You can pick and choose who you want to do that with. But it's important to show some of that personal side to the business people, the people who you want to do business with, to generate the, that feeling of a relationship, and then move them over to the business side of things. Absolutely, you you said it perfectly. Um, I've heard from many people when I look at buying a home or selling a home or obtaining a home loan, I want to be able to feel as if I can trust that person or a connection. So this is a great way to build that trust and that connection. Um, it's a great tool if you utilize it efficiently. So, so let's see here. Social wow tip number three, know your target market. So, you know, some real estate agents say, I want to really focus on, you know, people of a certain interest. And in this example, I use chiropractors. Um, you know, start asking your sphere, hey, I'm looking for chiropractors. You can do it in a private message. You can put it on your Facebook page. And people will start saying, oh, I know a chiropractor. And before you know it, you may have a long list. Well, then you can reach out to those chiropractors and say, hey, you know, you were recommended to me. I'd like to get to know you. It grows your sphere of influence even more. And that warm touch instead of that cold call. So, um, and it's up to you how you want to do that. So if you do a post on your Facebook wall, I'm looking for chiropractors, and let's say Mr. Smith says, well, I recommend Mr. Chiropractor, well, you might want to private message Mr. Chiropractor or call him up and say, hey, we have a mutual friend, Mr. Smith. He said we should meet and talk. I'd like to get to know more about your business and how I can support it. And you see how that relationship starts? Um, another great tip is to go to other business pages, especially locally. I had a woman, this happened to me, I did not know, and she kept reaching out to me on my fan page. As a result, I thought, this woman's taking a lot of interest in me and my company. I want to take interest back in her. So I sent her a private message saying, I appreciate your comments, would like to get to know you better. She sent me a Facebook friend request, and now we're referring business back and forth. And it, and it, it based on just a little bit of engagement and interaction, there's a relationship that was formed. Absolutely. And even locally in my community, um, someone suggested I become a part of a community page. And I started interacting with people. And this gentleman reached out to me and said, I really appreciate the interest you've taken in me on this community page. You know, let's chat. And we had a great conversation last week, and now we're looking at referring business to each other. Now, Jessica, let me ask you an important question about that. Sure. When you, when you went to the community page, did you make one single post, and poof, you got a, you got a response, no. and, and there was some business made for that? Or did it take a little bit of time to develop that? It took a little bit of time, just like any relationship. Um, and that's, that's great you brought that up, because... On my home page on my website, I wrote a letter. And in that letter, 
I explain, just like any relationship with family, dating, it's not poof, instant. It takes time. Well, the same goes for business. Mm -hmm. um, your business, you have to invest in, you know, and take care of people and show an interest, just like any other relationship. So on that community page, I was taking an interest in other people. And as a result, not only that one gentleman, there's another lady who reached out to me and said, I see your engagement, um, I feel comfortable with you, and I want to hire you. I actually went to your personal Facebook page, saw what you do, and I want to hire you. And, so, and that's the way that Facebook works. You guys, and, that, and I asked her that question pointedly because I, I knew what her response was going to be. <laughs> it, it's, it, I, and I asked that because I get the question all the time, every day. You know, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've been, I went on Facebook and I've done six posts this week and, and I don't have any business from it yet. Well, guys and girls, you've got to understand that developing a relationship, you can't just go to some, another page like, like what Jessica specifically talking about is she got invited to another community for another business and she's just, just communicating, having normal conversations on there. When somebody posts something, she's simply engaging back to what that person imposted about. And it, and it probably is something that Jessica has great knowledge about and is sharing freely her great knowledge. What that's done is it's just shown that she's a giver and she's willing to put the information out there. And yes, if you do the same, if you just share what you have and just have normal conversations, people will recognize that. And, and what will happen over time is you'll start getting those calls. You'll start getting that, hey, I saw your post about this, this, and this. I'm wondering, I was thinking about selling my home, and I'd like to talk to you further about it. it but it takes time. It's not going to be something you make a couple of posts and instantly you've got results from it. It does take time to develop relationships. It, it is a lot like, you know, you mentioned it, Jessica, it's a lot like dating. It takes a little bit of time before, you, before you've got a relationship there, or at least trust or credibility. Absolutely. And when you do go to these other pages in your community, you don't want to just talk about yourself. You want to take an interest in other people. And before you know it, they'll say, well, who is this person? What do they do for work? They'll naturally want to see what you do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about an important piece in that, and I find so many people are lacking in this piece, so we'll go into that in just a second. Um, but social wow tip number three continued is research top influential people who won awards in your target market. Okay, so let's say you want to reach out to you know more people in your community and just expand your sphere you may see that someone won an award and you can go to their business page and just congratulate them. Mm -hmm. And I have found that doing this, I actually did a test on this, it was mind blowing. Almost every single person reached out to me and wanted to be my personal Facebook friend. Hmm. And these are community lead, people who have won an award in your community, somebody that was in the newspaper recently for being this great community person. Yes. And That's you go to their business page and you congratulate them and, and, you know, and then you start interacting on their business page a little bit more, taking that interest. Before you know it, they're saying, well, who is this person? They're congratulating me. They're taking an interest in me. Who are they? And what do they do? Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, it starts evolving into a business relationship. And those people typically have influence because they have a, a following. They have fans already. And by engaging on their page about their topics, people will check out you. They'll click on your – don't think for a minute when somebody sees, you know, if I'm posting on – if I'm posting on the website for the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all the time and I'm commenting on other things based on my knowledge and, and just being – overall friendly, don't think for a minute people aren't clicking on my name to see who I am and what I'm about. That's why having your profile set up with you know who you are, what you do, and what you're about is that much more important because people are going to click and check you out when you start reaching out and engaging. As we're teaching you, you want people to engage with you. You need to do the same on other people's pages to kind of get your name out there in the community, get people to click on you. So, and exactly. that's what that's about is, is, you know, what you did is you just went to other people, you engaged, and people check you out naturally. They want to know who this is that has the cool knowledge. They're going to click on you. Absolutely. And I had someone who 
reached out to me on Facebook and we started the business relationship and we said let's meet so we met within this last week and she ran up and gave me a big hug she goes I feel as if I already <laughs> know you isn't that awesome and, it, and it it, was, it's a real friendship relationship based on just some engagement on on a on a website I know it's it's crazy but I do believe in it I mean I feel comfortable with some people that I'm friends with the more you get to know them um, and so my social wow tip number four, I've actually heard this from people, one of their pet peeves is when someone always just posts about themselves, but they don't take an interest back. So when I'm on Facebook, my main goal is not to talk about myself, but to engage with my friends on Facebook, comment on their posts, send them private messages, ask how they're doing, you know. Um, you know, not just sitting there just talking about myself all the time, because otherwise that's not a relationship. Who wants to be with someone who just talks about themselves all the time? And and if you're going to make posts, make posts that are fun and engaging. You know, what do you think of this puppy? Is it you know? But yes, always having a story about this is what I did today. This is what I'm doing today. This is here's where I'm at right now. Here's where I'm at tomorrow. Oh, did you know this weekend I'm going to be here? Those things, people will, some people will like or, or post it, but, but nobody wants, you know, everybody likes to talk about themselves. And mm -hmm. so if you're only posting about yourself, you give nobody else an opportunity to talk about themselves. It's okay to post about, hey, I'm headed over here this weekend. Have you ever been there? Now you're mm -hmm. asking for the engagement. You did the same kind of post, but now you're asking, you care, you're at, you're, you're showing them that you care. Have you ever been there? Let's talk about it. I want to hear what your experience was when you went. Absolutely. Ask questions. People love to give their opinion. Um, and it's, you know, share this post, say like this post if you agree. People, you know, people like that engagement. They want to communicate with you. And so social wow tip number four continued. Um, again, people like it when you take a personal interest in them. I found this to be powerful. Take the time to write a personal message on their wall. For example, you know, I could reach out to my friend Crystal and say, good morning, Crystal, how you doing? Just something short and simple. The fact that you went to their page, their wall, and engaged, people feel like you care. This is really powerful. Um, the next one is share an article with a friend and let them know you thought of them when you saw the article. Okay? That's a good one, too. Um, to, again, to show you care. Uh, my personal story, I had a friend on Facebook who was telling me of some health issues. I found an article she may like, so I privately messaged it to her. She loved it. Um, now she's a raving fan. She's always talking about us to people just because of taking that little interest and to keep taking that interest. Now, one of the things, and a question just came up, that, and specifically about this topic, Jessica, Mm -hmm. Taking the time to go to a specific fan or a specific relationship person or someone you're trying to grow a relationship, you know, in business there's multiple, there's more than one. You know, I may have 25 people I need to send that same message to today to make them feel as if I'm caring and I, I want to know how they're doing. How mm -hmm. much time do you invest in doing this kind of engagement? Well, again, I try and stay focused on my top A list, B list. Okay. You don't, you don't want to ignore everybody, but if you're limited on time one day, then you definitely want to go ahead and you know just focus your time on your top people. So but this isn't average, something you would do for like the whole list, but your top to your list of top 25s, absolutely yeah. get in there and do a quick copy and paste message to 25 of them. Absolutely, I would say maximum I would spend on social media for every channel an hour a day. Okay maximum. Um, Facebook, I do give more time and attention. Another tip is I have Facebook on my phone, so if I'm sitting somewhere and I have one or two minutes as I'm waiting for somebody, I will utilize that one or two minutes on Facebook. Which is because a good idea know. because you're, you, it, one of the things that I've seen, and, and you tell me if you've seen this too, it, it's very important to not post and run it's kind of like knocking on the door and then running out of there. If you post something to generate engagement, you need to, to do it where you've got a little bit of time to re-engage when somebody does engage with your post. So if, if I post something and I start getting, you know, and I've asked a question, hey, it's the, today's topic is what's your favorite food? What is your favorite food today? 
and I run away and don't check it until tomorrow, well, I've just got 15 posts of people that said this is what they liked, and I didn't engage back with any of them. I didn't say, ooh, I like lasagna too. Ooh, burritos are so good. I can only eat them with avocado in them, though, when somebody says they like burritos best. I, yeah. You need to make the time for that. And so what do you think is as far as, you know, an, an hour a day is, is, it seems like a short period of time, quite frankly, when you think about Facebook and engagement, especially when I'm making posts to try and engage people. And that could be an hour total. So sometimes I'll dedicate... 15 minutes in the morning, you know, 15 okay. minutes in the afternoon, you know, because gotcha. you are correct, you have to keep that conversation going and engaging. Mm -hmm. and so you just check it every now and then when, you, when you're at the stoplight just be, or, or at the doctor's office, pick up your phone and see what's up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't do it at the stoplight, guys. That was not right of me to say, don't do it at the stoplight. I'm laughing because I actually am guilty of doing that once and I realized what I was doing. Um, <laughs> so, so, for example, the other day, I remember a week ago one of my top clients wasn't feeling good. They posted on Facebook. So I put a message on their wall, hey, just checking in, are you feeling better? And they were so appreciative. And not only that, but to their whole sphere, then they may say, well, who's this Jessica Peterson? And she's actually taking an interest in our friend. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Pablo's got a great question here specifically to the slide you've got up. Is it more uh -huh. powerful to share an article in a private message or on my, on, my, on my wall publicly for everybody to see? That is a great question. Depending on the article, so in this situation I had a friend who had a health issue, you obviously don't want to post it on their wall mm -hmm. um, you know, saying, I thought you may enjoy this. But if you have an article you want to share, do post it on your wall and then reach out private message and say, you know, hey, Mr. Smith, I posted this article. I thought of you. You may want to see this. You know, you may want to Great check idea. this out. So you're, yeah. you're kind of tapping into both at the same time. You're getting the maximum exposure by posting it on your wall, but you're also reaching out specifically to that one person that you wanted to make sure got it. Exactly. Yesterday I was talking to a real estate agent, and I said, hey, there's a post. I was thinking of you. You know, you should go to my Facebook page. I just wanted to give you the heads up, and she was really appreciative. Awesome. So it's, it's a combination. Um, mm -hmm. Social out tip number five, people want to know you on a personal level. This will be a base for a strong, enduring relationship, okay? I hear from people that their biggest pet peeve is when any business, I've even heard specifically real estate agents post, I listed this home, I did this, I closed on this loan. That's all they ever talk about is business. People feel that disconnection, that they don't feel that connection with you and eventually they may say I don't even want to see what they have to post anymore because again people want to feel that connection you know if you have a favorite cat you know I had a sphinx cat I know a lot of people may not be fans of the hairless cats actually but, there's one sitting on my lap right now Aww, that's see and that's that was my baby um, and so, you know, but people, I've actually had some say, I feel that connection with you now that you posted that because we love hairless cats too, just something simple like that, you know, and, and the people that don't like the hairless cats just laugh it off. But just or they like, don't pay attention to that post. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I post they, a lot of my fish. I do a similar type of thing. I post a lot of my fishing stuff so that people know me on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And then now and then I will mix in a little business saying, oh, by the way, did you know you could do this on, on this atmosphere? So people know me on a personal level, but they're not so opposed to seeing my business post because I'm mixing them in with what I'm doing on a personal level. Absolutely, and you'll notice here it says 80% of personal. Definitely do put photos and videos, especially photos. You know, we're such visual people. It's, you know, if I was to say I, you know, love and miss my hairless cat, that would not be as engaging as if I posted a picture of him. And I did post a picture of him and I together, and it had a much greater response probably because of the photo. Hmm. So... Um, so social wow tip number six, time management. So like we talked a little bit about keeping it on your phone. Um, if I'm waiting for an appointment or a TV commercial, I'll quickly scan through it and just check it out. And some people, I've talked to some people who are addicts and they have to actually, you know, set aside time and do a little timer, a buzzer. Otherwise, before you know it, 
they've been on there for hours. People get locked in on, on social medias, and, and it does happen, and that's, that's one of the fears and one of the things that each and every one of us that are on this call, I, I know that I know I am guilty of it sometimes, um, and I have to catch myself. As a matter of fact, this morning, um, I came in, and I, there was a couple of posts on a couple of private groups that I was involved with yesterday on some learning stuff. And I came in this morning, and, and I opened my email. Before I checked my email, I needed to check what the, the last follow-up on that private group was for yesterday, and I did so. Um, mm -hmm. But then I started looking at my news feed. And before you know it, 25 minutes had passed, and I'm still scrolling through photographs on my news feed, and I had to catch myself. So you know, you got to make sure that you don't get yourself caught in the, the Pinterest or the, the Facebook trap, as they call it. Yes. Um, and, and again, some people actually set a timer that will buzz and go off, and they have to stop because they're too addicted. So, um, so I hope that that tip helps some people who find that they're on there probably more than they should be. <laughs> um, so again, you want to show interest. So going back to those lists, your ABC list, you know, go back and, and engage with people, like it, comment it. People love it when you share something. So when I go to someone's wall and I do find something valuable and I share it, they love that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess they probably feel a little bit special that you took an interest and not only did you take an interest, but you liked what they had to say and you shared it. You, you wanted to show your circle of influence what they had said. That makes anybody, you know, when you, may, you say something and other people pick it up and you hear somebody repeat it, that makes you feel good, like you've, you've said something in town, you've said something that makes people smile or whatever the case may be. And so that's the same kind of feeling when you share someone else's photo or share someone's post. Oh, this was great stuff. I hope you don't mind if I share it. By all me, you will never get anybody say to you, no, I'd prefer if you didn't share that. <laughs> it just isn't I, going to happen. No, and if that does happen, something's wrong with them. Yeah, you um, may want to defriend them or put them. Yeah. There's a whole separate list you can create for those folks. Exactly. So social wow tip number seven is each interaction brings your post to the top, and you want your post on the top. Um, sometimes, you know, you may have a post and no one's really responding or it's been a long time since someone responded. You can reach out to a friend and say, hey, did you see my post? Love your input. And then the minute that they give an input, it bumps up to the top, and then you notice more people see it and start interacting with it all over again. So it's because you don't want to be on the bottom. You want, if you have something really important to say, you want to make sure it keeps staying on the top. Absolutely. Okay, so social wow tip number eight, starting new relationships, take an interest in their business page. So this example is bookkeeping, okay? Um, and I want to show something actually to you. This, this shows you how to do this, but I want to show this physically to you if, if that's okay, Paul. Yep. Uh, it's always okay. scary going live, but I absolutely, there's a lot of times when it's, it becomes necessary to be able to show live what, what you're talking about to really get the full impact. Exactly. So I put in here moving to Colorado, okay, and that's in your search. Okay, so I'm just going to do this from the beginning. So you have to go down to where it says see more results, okay? So we're going to click on that, see more results, and then you want to go to public posts, okay? And you can see where those words are in there, okay? So you can see, um, like here's one gentleman. He said, wonder what happen if I move to Colorado. Um, one day I will move back to Colorado, okay? I'm showing you this because I'll get to that in just a minute. But there's people, I mean, even this morning I saw a couple more. Someone posted, um, now it won't show because that was a couple hours ago. But someone posted, I'm so excited, December 2014, I am making the move to Colorado. And, and that's frequently, when you do a search like this, guys, you will find these things. Now, don't get me wrong, not every single one of the results is going to be what you're looking for. But here's the cool thing about doing that search, and I've tried this a couple of times, Jessica, here in, in the Clearwater area, you know, mm -hmm. moving to Clearwater. And... I'm lucky I'm in an area like Clearwater, Florida, because it's a highly move. It's a, it's a destination for people to move to. And mm -hmm. so when I do a search like that, I can typically find four or five people a day 
that I can implement this strategy that you're going into. Exactly. And now Facebook is talking about if you want to private message those people, charging you a dollar. But you know, you can send a message, say, hey, I see that you're looking at moving to Clearwater. Um, if you ever have any questions, you know, want to know what top or what some great businesses to connect with, I'm here for you, you know, just to take that interest. Um, it's a gold mine to find out who's actually looking at moving. Now also, and, and this may be something you haven't tried before, and uh, Michael is bringing it up, and it's something I knew about, and, and I've done it this way. If you actually put quotes around moving to Colorado, it will only show you those results with those words in conjunction with one another. Yes, absolutely, yes. So you can put I, quotes in your search as well to really mm -hmm. hone down. Um, it, it, it's going to limit you in the results because if the person didn't type in their message the words moving to Colorado in succession like that and they said simply I'm going to be moving I think it's going to be Colorado I'm going to move to you're not going to get those results so exactly, just keep yeah. in mind when you when you narrow it down you may exclude some but you're also going to get a more exact result so kind of play with it in a couple of different ways and see what you come up with um, if if Facebook, I'm wondering how Facebook can determine how to charge you a dollar to do that because it basically boils down to does the person's profile have messaging open and available on their profile? If they've got, if they have it set to their profile allows for you to message even though you're not friends, then they can't charge you that dollar. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how they will implement that. So okay, I'll, We'll have to keep our eyes open, but boy, oh boy, are you, if I've got four people that I know are going to be moving to Florida in the next five to six months that I can send a message to, I'll pay a dollar every time to send them a message, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. Um, so anyhow, social wow tip number eight in action. Choose a person whom you're interested in making a business relationship. Start interacting like we talked earlier on their business page. And if they don't reach back out to you, then after you take an interest, you can send them a private message saying, would you like to connect? Mm -hmm. You know, and typically that, that does work because they'll notice, hey, they've liked my business page, they're interacting in on it, they will probably check you out. Um, so yeah, so that's a great way that's to grow. That's a great your... little note on the bottom of that last slide, that little, the take an interest in them before even yes. reaching out and regarding your business. Make sure that you show interest in them first. Hey, I like what you're doing. Hey, it looks like you've got it together. Hey, it looks like you understand what's going on here. I like what you're doing so far. Hey, I may have an idea that can help you even further that. So I said four things about how much I liked what they were doing already before I dropped the bomb of, hey, I may be able to help you even further that. Exactly. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind as you're engaging with somebody or trying, you know, to, to develop a new business relationship with a new person. Engage it, be interested in them first. Give them an opportunity to see you be interested in them and then reach out to them. That gives them a, more of an idea that, hey, this person really has followed me and they, they really are interested in what I'm doing here. Absolutely. Um, you said it perfect. So social wow tip number nine, sometimes you do have to pick up the phone. You should and will have to, but be careful, um, you know, you're familiar with your state and federal do not call laws. Hmm. And I have spoken to real estate agents who say, I'll pick up the phone and, you know, call a past client from four years ago. Uh-uh, you, you have to be really careful with that um, and your intent. So that's another reason why Facebook is so good, because you can keep up those relationships and not be breaking any laws. And it still feels to the person like it's a personal relationship. Facebook feels every bit as personal to, to most people as a, as a phone call or a text message. It's, it's very personal to them what they do on Facebook. Absolutely. So here's something. I did a little experiment. I went to some people on the group in Agent Mastermind, and I noticed so many people do not have their business page linked to their personal profile. So if I'm sitting there and you know notice that Mr. Smith is someone I want to look at doing business with, we're engaging conversation in a local community page, and then I want to learn about him, and there's a broken link, I mean, it just kind of 
brings that disconnection because then I can't like their business page, I can't start interacting with them even more. So, so many people um, do have a business page, but it's not linked correctly, okay? So this is very important. We'll show you how to do that. And like I said, I did experiment, and there's a lot of people who do not have their link set up correctly. And, and a lot of people believe that they need to keep their business and their, their personal pages separated. Oh, I don't want my business page and my personal page to enter. It's so opposite of what you should be doing on Facebook. They, they are intertwined. Think about your business life and right now where you're at today and, and each and every one of you on this call, you, you absolutely have to admit that your personal life and your business life are intertwined. They are synonymous with one another. It, it, it just is part of life. You know, it's, it's what we, it's, our work becomes who we are, who we are becomes our work kind of thing. We also enjoy our fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we're all a bunch of workaholics and that's all we ever think about. I'm just saying that our work life is intertwined with our personal lives. Facebook is the same thing and people want that aspect of your business life. They want to know that you have a personal side of things too. And on the personal level, they want to know what your business life is. What does this person do and are they successful? Absolutely. And if you're that worried about it, then maybe you have too many Facebook friends you shouldn't have. I'm more about quality than quantity. Mm -hmm. It's not about who has you know, 4,000 friends. If you're that worried about someone not knowing, you know, too much about you, you may want to reconsider having them as your friend. So this just goes through the step by step of how to set that up, um, because again, I know that so many people have that link broken. Okay, so here's social wow tip number eleven: um, go to a Facebook business page and then give them a shout out of kind words. People love that. So here's an example of Roxy who reached out to us and posted out there, you know, a great message. You know, thank you. You've been the most helpful friend and businesswoman I met all year. And so that made me feel good. And so it makes me want to go out there and commend other people out there on Facebook. People people like to be complimented and commended. So do take the time to go out there to your sphere and give them compliments on their Facebook walls. Have you ever tried that one, Paul? Absolutely. I, I actually, I, I mentioned fishing quite a bit. I, one of the side businesses I do is I'm, I'm helping run a fishing, uh, red fishing tournament here locally. And one of the things that we're doing with some of our corporate sponsors is, is we're, we're taking each each week we feature a new corporate sponsor on our business page and we ask that our members go to that business page and, and like their page or you know just go check out their page about eighty percent of our of our fans are going to those business pages and saying things like hey thanks for your sponsorship we really appreciate what you're doing um, for the tournament so it's it, it's that cross back and forth business stuff and so our sponsors are happy as a clam because we're getting all of our fans to go over there and engage on their page and they're saying something nice which makes that page feel good. Now they're coming back over and they're saying nice things on our page as well and getting their fans to see our tournament. Absolutely. Um, you know, people love to be complimented, have it an interest and that I'm a firm believer there's more happiness in giving than receiving too. Mm -hmm. So when I go out there and give compliments to people, it makes me feel good too. So. And it's, a, it's free. You can't beat free. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Customer Wild Project gifting service. So anybody who's interested in that, they definitely can go ahead and check it out. Because ultimately, we're all about building those business relationships. Because again, it's more expensive to go out there and find a new customer versus taking care of your current ones. Um, so that pretty much ends the presentation. I know it looks like we're right on time. That is perfect timing. There are a couple. Do you have a minute for a couple of questions? I've been trying to keep up on some of the questions that, that are posted, but there are some really good ones that I think a lot of people have the same question about it. Do you, do you mind a couple of questions? Not, not a problem. I'd love to. Awesome. Awesome. So um, let me scroll back up here to get to the ones. Um, Laura is asking, you mentioned a professional business page and a personal page. What is the best way to set up a business page? 
So what is the best way? Well, it all depends on the business. So we assisted a real estate agent um, with her business page, but we incorporated, you know, real estate. It could be real estate Kathy or your, your real estate agent Kathy. You know, you definitely want to brand it with you versus the big company name. I find that some agents may do ABC Realty, but not really focus on them. You got to remember, people come to do business with you, typically, over just because of a big business name. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Um. Okay, Anna has a phenomenal question. This is one that, that I'm not really sure quite how to handle myself and, and would love to get your opinion on this, Jessica. Um, it's a, the question is coming from Anna, and it says, what should you do with a friend who is a great prospect overall but occasionally posts some material that is sometimes distasteful? Um, what would you do? You are sometimes judged by the friends you keep. So are they posting distasteful information on their page or your page? That, that's a good question. So let's just say for the sake of, of argument that they've, take, they've posted something distasteful to my wall. Okay, so I have it set up where I monitor that on my page. And I have had that. Um, and I go ahead and typically just remove it right away. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't reach out to them or say anything unless it becomes a habit. But I do have, uh, I actually have a family member who posts some crazy stuff I don't care to see. So I actually hide their post, and I have to actually go to their page if I want to take an interest. So I'm not seeing that in my news feed. Okay. So there's a couple of ways that you can, you can do that, kind of protect yourself. Um, I know that, that for me, I actually... On one of my lists, I have a list set up so that no one on that list can actually post to my wall. So perhaps it would be a list that you'd set up and add that person in, the, and then they can't post on your. They can comment on your posts, and you can see their stuff. They just can't post to your wall, and it doesn't give them a message that says Paul has made it, so you can't post on his wall. They just aren't able to post on the wall, so they think they're having a computer issue. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, several of you are asking, can we get a copy of the, uh, of the presentation materials? Yes, you can. Um, these will be available. All you have to do is contact the loan professional who invited you today. Uh, they'll be able to get you access to the PowerPoint presentation as well as the recording. And guys, I would highly recommend, watch this one another time. Um, I know I certainly am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow through and, and reiterate a couple of things that I learned today about engagement, about using lists to, to focus my efforts on the, peop on the people that are most important in terms of my business as opposed to just being the most important friends I have. I need to make sure that I'm focusing my efforts when I'm doing business-related posting and business-related Facebooking to the people that, that are more likely to, to help me generate more business. Does that make sense? Um, so just contact the loan professional who invited you. They'll be able to get you access to this, uh, to all the materials that we have, as well as some past classes as well, and, and perhaps even um, a Facebook, how to, how to build a Facebook page for, for those that are interested in, and haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, Tom is asking, is it good to have multiple business pages that cater to different parts of, the, of your real estate? Like for, he's in real estate, obviously. So is it, is it a good idea to have multiple business pages that cater to the different niches in, within that market or just one page that you talk about all those things? That's a great question. If I was in his shoes, I would do one page that covers them all, and I would do individual pages that focus on niches. Okay. Kind of maximize all levels, you know, however you do it. And then depending, have your lists set up, Tom so that if these people are specifically interested or these people are specifically part or going to be a, a client for this particular niche, then you communicate to that group with posts that are about that and communicate to the different groups based on what your niche is or what your, what your, what your program is. Um, that was a similar question. Yeah. <laughs> 
not sure what that question is meaning, so I'm going to skip that one. Sorry about that. A few months, who can I contact? Um, Megan, if you send me an email to support at the Marketing Animals, I'll help you find out who that loan professional was. I, I can certainly help you find out who that was. Um, it looks like we've covered a good majority of the questions. Some of them are similar questions that we've, um, how to create a list, how do you prevent that list from posting on your wall, what and where is this setting. So in your, in your settings themselves, um, are you able to go live and, and show us on a list how you would say, you know, you don't want the, to make that list available to post on your wall? Are you able to do that or do you know how to do that, Jessica? Because okay. I, I could show how to do that if you want. Uh, um, let's see here. So this account I'm logged into is not a real account. Um, but what you can go ahead and do is just post something, you know, it is a great day. And then right here, this is where your list would show up if you want to see, if you only want someone on a certain list to see something. Is that what the question was? Or, or how do you prevent one of those lists from posting on your wall? Um, how so do you if I go to, where is my update info? And it has been a minute since I did this. Friends. So when you add them to a list, Oh, that's not it. When you add them to a list, wait, wait, go back. I'm, I'm trying this. Hold, bear with me, you guys. So when I add them to a list, it's under settings. Okay. So when you add them, when you add a friend to a list, and, and I'll just, um, let me come back over here. Do you mind if I take the screen from you, Jessica? Not a problem. You guys seeing my screen okay now? We, we should have switched over and you guys should. Are you seeing my screen, Jessica? Yes. Okay. So what I did is I went into update, in, or update info, was it? No, I went to here. Where is my friends? Where did they go? I just had it up here just a second ago. There's my friends. So here's all of my friends. And let's say I want to make it so that uh, Lauren is unable to post on my thing. So I'm going to click her name, show news feeds, there's close friends, here's my different list. I can add to another list if I want to, but she's in my friends list, so I can go to settings. Um, how many updates? Nope, that's what I'm going to see from her. Add to another list. So here are my lists. So if I add her to my MMA friends, where I can't remember where I go to edit what my friends list does. Do you remember where that is? I think they moved that recently. So are you trying it's, to? OK, ask here it is. Here's, I'm in friends, and there's an edit button. You can see your friends list on your timeline. If you customize public only me, see all lists. So if I go to my MMA friends, why is that not doing what I want it to do? Okay, custom, specific people or list, MMA friends, don't share this with, or people on this list, share this with, no, that's not it. Um, I'm going to need to research that. I tell you what, send me an email and I'll figure out exactly where that is. I, I remember when I was setting up the list, it was part of what I did when I set up the list or added that as a list. Um, and it came directly from when I had a friend's request. I went into it, I went to confirm, and then when I went to my list that I wanted to see, it was part of that. And then new list, let's go with test list.
I think they recently moved it. That's why you're having a hard time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a long time since I did any changing with the list, and there is a way to do it. It's got to be in my settings somewhere, so I'll, I'll take yeah. a peek and look around um, and, and look at my settings and my, and my information. Um, I'll ask me that question next Tuesday. I'll be able to answer it for you and show you. Awesome. Yeah, they changed that somewhere in settings. Oh, Jeff said it's time to set up a PowerPoint and, and, and give us step by steps. You got it right, my brother. I'll, I, I will know how to do that by next week. I hate that when I can't when I go live and I can't show exactly how to do it. I, the button used to be where it was, but now it's not. So I'll, we'll play with it and figure that out, and I'll be able to get that information to you. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much. Once again, you, you outdid yourself. I appreciate you. Um, and, and great stuff. Oh, well, thank you. It's a huge honor. I'm so happy to be here, and I look forward to creating new relationships with people who, who were on this call. Well, we appreciate you, and, and I'll tell you, guys and girls, take a peek at the PowerPoint. Go through some of these steps. Take the extra initiative to engage specifically with people on a personal level, and you will see an impact in your business. I, I can guarantee you that because I've seen it work with, with some of the side projects that I'm doing. So, um, Jessica, thank you once again. Guys and girls, if you don't mind, if, you, if you're a member of the Facebook private group that we've got, we've got a private group available. Um, in Facebook for the agents, and if you guys want have some questions or need to post some things or, or exchange ideas amongst yourself to get there, it's just facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. You're welcome to join us there. Um, it, it's a community of agents where we're just sharing ideas with one another, and we'd love your ideas as well. So uh, join us there. Uh, thank you, Benita. We'll get you in as soon as possible, as soon as we get off here. If you'd like a copy of today's recording or PowerPoint, uh, just get in touch with the loan professional who invited you. As a matter of fact, even if you don't need a copy of the PowerPoint and, and recording from today, contact the loan professional who invited you and thank them for bringing you in here. Engage with them. Thank them very much for, for bringing you into this class to help you grow your business. So, guys, girls. We will see you next week. Um, Scotty will be back with us on Tuesday next week, and I believe we will be diving right back into the uh, Google and Gmail stuff that we left off on last week. So we will see you right back here, same time, same place next week. Have a great week, everybody.